What's good folks, it's your boy Dookie. Now I got a quick video right here. First off, before I get started, I wanna apologize for the horrible point the camera at the screen vibe that I got going on right now. I know it's super unprofessional, but I wanted to go ahead and get something out real quick because I, I felt like this wasn't really shown very well amongst a lot of the YouTube videos I've seen. So this is definitely something I was trying to get out. Now this is my Ryzen 5 build with the 1600. So far I'm loving it and I actually got in my Gigabyte RX 580. So I'm gonna be throwing that in the machine. I've been doing a bunch of benchmarks with my old 970 in there. I'm gonna throw in the 580 and do the same benchmarks. We gonna have a video showing the comparisons. Not really a versus, but just kind of showing like if you have one of those older cards and you're thinking about either switching teams to Team Red or just upgrading and you're trying to see if, you know, the 580 could give you the same type or better, uh, could give you a lot, a little bit better FPS for a little bit less than what you paid for your 970 initially so we'll see we'll see we'll see but what i want to address here is that i have my ryzen 1600 overclocked already here i'll pull up cpu-z okay i zoomed in a little bit and you can see i have my amd ryzen 5 1600 okay you see that i have it running at uh 3.742 right now and my core voltage is 1.356 so I do have a little baby overclock on here. Nothing substantial because I'm running on the stock cooler, which is actually doing pretty well. But it's Texas. Our AC is broke, but it's holding its own. I haven't pushed it too hard. But I can't tell when gaming and I have all the fans on, it, it, the, the, it gets kind of loud in this case that I have. Oh, if you haven't seen the review of the case, it is the Cullinan Tempered Glass case from Rosewell. Beautiful case. Go check that out. Link is at the top. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump into the bias. We're gonna return this back to stock. Then I'm gonna show you the overclock that I was able to get and how I got there, all right? Let's go. All right, as we jump into the bios here, the main reason that I wanted to make this video is that I saw a little bit of a difference between the guys of what other motherboards do and this one right here. Now what I have is the Gigabyte AB350 Gaming. It's a pretty good board. I'm, I've I have no problems with it so far and I was able to get a good overclock with it. Now, a lot of people have the Gaming 3. That's pretty similar. I think there's a few different setting things in there, but we're gonna address this from the AB350 Gaming. Okay, we're back at stock settings. I just simply went in and hit load optimize defaults. That returns it back to stock settings on what we have here. All right, so I rebooted. As you can see, everything went back to stock. We got the frequency running at 3.2. That's where it's at. That's where it was at stock. I've seen mixed results with these Ryzen chips. People have been able to push it further. I'm probably sure I could push it a little bit further if I was running on a better cooler, but I'm not gonna try that. I don't wanna blow the chip out before I go too far. Feel free to flame me below in the comments or help educate me. So this is all pretty much one of the new experiences with me with overclocking these chips. But I was trying it out to see if I can get a little bit more power and I was able to. It is actually pretty easy with this board if you know where to go. Shout out to Reddit. There was a subreddit there that helped me out a lot. What you wanna do is when you start off, you wanna come to your advanced frequency settings. Click it here and you'll see that your core settings is at 3200. Now you can change this here or you can come in here to your advanced core settings and change it there. So let's do that here. Now with this board, you have to remember that if you press up and down and things like that, left and right, trying to change your frequencies, nothing will happen. You have to hit page up and page down. So if I hit page down, it starts to jump. So we're gonna move this all the way up. We're gonna keep it pretty, like I said, I don't wanna fry this chip before I get a chance to really test it with some high frequency stuff. So we're gonna keep it at 3.75, all right? So after we push the clock up to 3.7 gigahertz, we wanna come down and disable these features. AMD cool and quiet function, SVM mode, and C6 mode. Seems to me that you can leave these auto as they won't hurt your overclock. Now, right here, this is your memory. I have eight gigabytes of Patriot Viper memory in there with the XMB profile on there. To keep it safe, I overclocked that to 2,066 megahertz. And so you wanna come down here and adjust that. 
Now we come back out one more time. And you want to go to advanced voltage settings. Now this is where I got kind of messed up and I saw a lot of people on Reddit were having some issues. Now other boards, you can go in here and set your voltage cord to specific numbers. With this board, it's an offset. So instead of setting it to the exact number that you want, you offset it from what the stock is. So I changed mine to 1 point to 0.120 and the DRAM to 1.30 that allowed me to overclock the RAM. So we're going to save and exit. We're going to go back into Windows. Whew. Okay, I won't lie. The first time I did this, and just like now, it takes a little bit while for it to come back. It was not the fastest. You know, if you're used to restarting your system with the SSD and it pops right back up, it's going to take you about a good 30 seconds. It reminds you of those old windows, or if you're still on a computer like that, I'm sorry for you. But um, yeah, now what we're going to do is here, we're going to log in and run a stress test. All right, so we have real bench pulled up right here. Uh, we're gonna choose the stress test. We're gonna run that for an hour and using four gigabytes of RAM because I only have eight gigabytes. So we're gonna see if that is enough. Now we're just gonna run this and see what's good. Let's go ahead and start. So it's doing this thing. We're gonna come back in an hour and see what's popping. All right, folks, it's been about an hour here. You can see we're at minute number 59 with the stress test real bench. No shutdowns or anything like that. Like I said, I fully expect, hopefully, that you guys will leave me some comments letting me know ways I could tweak this, letting me know ways I could do it better and really get the best out of this overclock. I, what I wanna do is eventually put together something real nice. All right, folks, we're back in here with what I would consider to be a stable overclock. It's 1.41 a.m. in the morning. I'm gonna go ahead and get up out of here. Make sure you leave me a comment. I wanna know what I could do to change my methods to get a better overclock. Maybe I need to try Ada 64 or Prime 95 for my stress testing. What else can I do? Maybe do I need to bring my V-Core down or take my voltage up? And by no means is this a complete comprehensive overclocking guide. If you're looking for a good one, I say check out Paul's Hardware. He just did a great guide on overclocking Ryzen 5 on various motherboards across various different systems and chips. So I just suggest checking that out. But I want to thank y'all for checking this out. Holla at your boy down in the comment section and let's learn a little bit more about this together, all right? Get at me.